C3AI is down over 5% today in reaction to their recent earnings that they reported after the bell today. So this is their first quarter 2024 financial results. Obviously, we're not in 2024. They have a different uh, setup with their quarters. Um, but so I'm going to run through the most important notes you need to be taking from this quarter. Then at the end of the video, I will give a price prediction based on technical analysis. So with that being said, let's let's dive right in. So this is a quote from their CEO, Thomas Siebel. He said, it's difficult to describe the scale of the increasing interest that we are seeing globally in enterprise AI adoption. And that's just a quote from him, but I, I, I want to run through these numbers quickly. So total revenue for the quarter was 72.4 million coming in at the high end of guidance of 70 million to 72 million subscription revenue um, for the quarter was 61 million co consisting of 85 percent of total revenue gross profit for the quarter was 40 million representing a 56 percent gross profit margin that gross profit margin actually dropped and i and i really think that's that's why shares are kind of dropping today i'll i'll go into that in depth later in this video but um just to keep it moving here non-gap gross profit for the quarter was 49 million re representing a 69 percent non-gap gap go, uh, gross profit margin and then cash balance. So we had a $809 million in cash and cash equivalents. And then free cash flow of about $9 million. And then and then um, when we look at that, they entered into a new, a, a couple new agreements that you need to know about. So um, first off, they entered into agreements with uh, Riverside County, California, um, Con Edison, Shell, Tyson Foods, and the U.S. Department of Defense. And then in, in terms of some customer wins um, in their partner network, so C3 AI's partner ecosystem consists to yield, or, excuse me, continues to yield strong results. In Q1, we closed 20 agreements with and through our partner network, including Google Cloud, AWS, Microsoft, and Booz Allen Hamilton. Over 60% of our business was closed with and through the C3AI partner network. C3AI's federal business is showing strength as well, with federal bookings up 39% compared to just a year ago. Um, so the company continues to expand its work with the U.S. Department of Defense with new and expanded projects with the chief digital and AI officer of the U.S. Marine Corps and the U.S. Air Force, the Missile Defense Agency as well, and the Defense Counter Intelligence and Security Agency. So the CIA is using C3AI, the CIA and the, the most important branches of the government are are turning to C3 AI for their AI systems, which is obviously, you know, a, a good th uh, thing for, for the company. And it really shows, it it kind of exemplifies um, their their premium business, right? They, they are kind of the go-to business um, in the AI space, which is awesome, right? So C3 AI's customers also include Shell, Bank of America, U.S. Department of Defense, and some others. And then to to meet market demand, C3 AI today announced the immediate availability of the new C3 generative AI suite, including 28 new domain-specific generative AI solutions for industries, business processes, and enterprise systems, all of which can now be fully deployed within 12 weeks for 250 grand. So pretty affordable for a business right and um they're now available on aws marketplace c uh c excuse me gcp marketplace and the azure marketplace as well and then i'll, I'll read out a quote here from siebel so the market response to our generative ai solutions is staggering c3 ai generative ai provides fine-tuned tailored generative ai solutions that address the crippling problems that prevent widespread industry adoption of large language models. We, we believe the advent of generative AI may more than double the addressable market immediately available to C3 AI. And now with our new C3 
generative AI suite of products out the door. You can expect there will be investing in the coming quarters to pr promote, market, and support these initiatives. After careful consideration with our leadership and our marketing partners, we have made the decision to invest in lead generation, branding, market awareness, and customer success related to generative AI solutions. So they're really, um, you know, kind of diving head first into this sales um, sales push. We started the company. This is another quote from Siegel. Um, we, we started the company when the market was nascent. And as the market has developed and expanded, we have expanded our branding and our marketing offerings to meet market expectations. While we believed for over a decade that this market would be quite large, no one could have anticipated the size and the growth rate of the AI market that, that we now own. So, um, you know, reading out some of the, the numbers here, so... Really, the most important numbers um, I'll, I'll dive into later, but the the guidance numbers here. So for the second quarter, the, the, this upcoming quarter, they're guiding total revenue of seventy two to seventy six million dollars, or excuse me, um, yeah, no, seventy two to seventy six million dollars, and then non gap loss of twenty seven to forty million dollars, and then. Total revenue for the full fiscal year of 2024 guidance is for 295 million to 320 million, and then um, non-GAAP loss from operations is uh, is per projected anywhere from 70 million to 100 million over the next year. And then I'll dive into a couple more of these numbers. So we can see here that subscriptions have jumped in drastically for um, C3 AI, which is all, always a, a good sign. Um, and then we see total cost of revenue also jumping. Um, so that's likely tied into that sales push, right, that we've been talking about. Gross profit uh, did drop, unfortunately, by about $5 million. Um, so with that being said, let's keep it moving. So cash also dropped as well. So cash dropped about 80 roughly 80 million dollars which i don't love to see personally i would like to see them kind of hold some cash but obviously you know they see it as a better use of capital to kind of put it to work and then total assets dropped as well basically another 30 30 million dollars and then total liabilities uh dropped off about um 30 million as well and then de depreciation and amortization increased by roughly two million dollars for those that don't know that basically just tells you that their um you know their depreciation of uh, equipment and a amortization really just the loss of value of their patents um are increasing so that's that's not great but you know at, at the end of the day it's kind of typical of, of of a company in this space especially a newer company and then gross profit margin <clears throat> so we, we we talked about the 56 and the 69 percent and we can see that's down from 72 percent and 81 percent per percent respectively for uh, gross profit margin so gross profit margins are slumping i suspect that's really the um that's really behind this this drop in, in the share price and then you can see sales and marketing they are like, like Siebel said, um, they are, you know, kind of pushing out their products more and we can see that within their sales and marketing spend. And then also we can see free cash flow has um, increased almost about 40, or excuse me, I should say $30 million. Nope, sorry, can't do math. Uh, $30, $30 million roughly. Um, so uh, that is definitely interesting to see that their free cash flow is increasing. Um, so that free cash flow increased by $40 million. Sorry. <laughs> um, so with that being said, though, I'll take a look at the chart and see if we can't give a price prediction. So I know some people are kind of just longer term shareholders. So no problem if this doesn't interest you. But I wanted to give this out for those who are, you know, kind of trading and, you know, looking for a spot, uh, at, you know, where they can kind of get into the stock. So first off, since the shares have kind of topped out at this $44 level. 
and they've obviously moved lower over the past couple months, we've seen volume slump off pretty drastically, right? You can see that here with, with the blue and, and the red bars, or excuse me, the green and the red bars. We've seen volume slump off pretty drastically. Anytime we get a slump in volume coinciding with the slump in price, it basically just tells you that selling pressure is kind of slowing. So, um, you know, that typically implies a reversal of price trend. Um, so I think we're, we're going to see that re re reversal of price trend for the stock play out over the coming weeks. Also, we're seeing the stock kind of hold support at around $29, which is where shares had bottomed out in June. It's also where shares had bottomed out in early, um, in early June, I should say as well. And then this is where shares had topped out in February and in March. So past resistance becomes new support. We're seeing that level act as support for the stock around 30 bucks. Um, so, you know, that, that this level should hold for the stock. And we're actually seeing this $29 level, this buying zone actually hold up even post market with the declines um, in reaction to, to those gross profit numbers. Um, but I, I do see it as likely that we likely hold this level and we see a move higher to 44 bucks. Over the coming weeks, I picked this $44 level, not randomly. It's just where shares had topped out in the past. So I think we hold this level and we likely move higher over the coming weeks for this stock. So with all that being said, I think the quarter was actually a pretty good one. They, they touted a lot of good partnerships. Um, many of the numbers were very solid. It was just those profitability numbers that didn't look good for the company. So with all that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I will end it there. If you got some value from this video, please leave a like. We post company breakdowns and important market moving news on this channel on a daily basis. So make sure you are subscribed. If you would like to receive my daily portfolio moves, my exits, my entries, and see how me and my team of analysts are trading the markets, join the Discord through the link in the description below to get our free seven-day trial. Also, if you would like to join our free daily newsletter, sign up to our Substack, which is linked below as well. With that being said, good luck, everyone. Happy trading. Happy investing.